I want to talk to you today about uh, the resurrection and uh, wonder why because it's Easter <laughs> and so we're excited that, that uh, of what the resurrection means I'm calling this me message resurrection benefits we have a lot of great benefits because he came up out of that grave number one salvation <laughs> okay and we have a high priest, and we have a Lord, and we have a shepherd that's watching over us. So today we want to look at this thought. Because of the resurrection, we now have a human in the Godhead who understands us. And for a lot of us, that thought never occurred, and it didn't occur to me until uh, not just a few years ago, that Jesus Christ was born of a woman. He had a human body just like you and me. And he came and died in our place. And if he stayed dead, he was just dead. But if he really came up out of that grave in, uh, in his human body, was resurrected from the dead, and the disciples were able to touch him, then he was really a live human being after the crucifixion. And when he ascended to the right hand of the Father, the human body went with him. And so to me, it's encouraging to know that we have a human in the God Godhead that's been through everything we've been through. <laughs> Amen. And I hear people say, well, nobody knows what I'm going through. Uh, there's one. There's one. And he's alive and well. And then the amazing thing is, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's walking around uh, wherever you are right now, too. <laughs> you know, he's around us. He's with us. He said, I never leave you, never forsake you. That's pretty good pretty big benefit of the resurrection so the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves he is the son of God if he stayed in that grave he wasn't who he said he was he said he'd be raised on the third day if he did not uh, come out of that grave on the third day he didn't tell the truth he was a false prophet and some Christians and churches and pastors say they do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ I want them to rethink this today. And if you're one of those who doubt the resurrection, rethink it. But the Word of God makes it clear that if Christ died and stayed in the grave, Satan won, and the Lord's prophecy of being resurrected in three days was false. The, it's hard to believe he's the Son of God and believe he told things that were not true. The question is, did he defeat Satan, hell, and the grave? If he did, then we do, if he did not, rather, if we did, let's look at the did not side a little bit. If he did not, then we do not have a Lord or a high priest or a king. We do not have a shepherd to lead us and guide us through life. However, if the grave could not hold him, then Jesus is the victor. If he is back from the grave, then we have been redeemed from the power of the old slave master, the devil. Jesus defeated him, and his resurrection is proof positive that he is the Son of God. And so our faith is not in a dead man. Our faith is in the living Son of God. He lives, and, that, and we know we have a living high priest. We can come into his presence anytime we choose, including right now. I believe he's in our presence, and we're in his. So now we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You see, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have these benefits if it was not for the resurrection. In Acts chapter 2, verse 24, now I don't just tell stories. I like to investigate and understand things and so today we want to understand the resurrection as best we possibly can uh, being human beings it may be a little difficult but let's pay attention to the word of God <clears throat> Acts chapter 2 verse 24 but God raised him from the dead that's what the early church really believed because many of them saw him after he came out of that grave but God raised him from the grave, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. If he was God, then death could not handle him. He's coming out, coming out of that grave. The fact that death could not hold him is evidence that he is the Son of God. 
who through the spirit of holiness uh, was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection. You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that he is the Son of God and he is alive and well. You see, if he stayed dead, uh, he was not God. And, and that was uh, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, by his resurrection from the dead, the Holy Spirit proved he was the Son of God. And then in Luke 24, 45, it says, Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ explained to his disciples about uh, his life and his death and his resurrection. And I believe today, through the Scriptures, he's using me to open our understanding about the resurrection. Verse 48 and he, Jesus, said to them, this, or Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And so he used the scriptures as we're using today, and as he's using today through me, he used the scriptures to teach them <clears throat> what was about to happen. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. So take notes on this. You need to know this. That's Luke 24, verse 45. So Jesus taught his disciples from Scripture that the Christ would suffer, die, and be raised from the dead. You see, we need to be, we need, we need to be in Scripture so he can open our minds to understand. Look what he says, what he says. <clears throat> then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. If you're going to allow him to teach you the scriptures, you need to be in the scriptures. <laughs> you need to start studying the word of God and begin right here, right now, today by taking notes. And then it says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. <clears throat> You see, we need to be in the Scriptures so he can open our minds to understand. People say, well, I don't understand the Word of God. But Jesus said, after the Holy Spirit is given, that he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance and guide you into all truth and show you things to come. But in order for that to happen, you must be in the Word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that's why... It don't, don't matter if it's Christmas or Easter or whatever it is. It's my job, I believe, to teach the Word, explain the Word, because that's where the power is, and that's what builds your faith. And today, you need to have faith to know you have a high priest. And no matter how bad the coronavirus virus or pandemic gets, you still have a high priest, and you can go boldly into his presence. And a few times, I almost got depressed myself, locked in the house, and I just get into his presence, and all of a sudden the joy of the Lord comes, and I beat that depression, and I'm back to grinning again. And that's the way you do it. You, you, the Word of God builds your faith. And what's my faith? What should be your faith? Is that you have a high priest, and he's just waiting on you. You're not waiting on him. You're waiting, he's waiting on you to get into his presence and talk to him. In Psalm 16, verse 10, you will not... You will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. And so the Lord knew that Father God wasn't going to leave him in that grave. This is a prophecy that God would not let the Christ dec decay in the grave. In Luke chapter 9, verse 22, uh, Jesus said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected. You see, when he came to this earth, he knew where he was going he was going to the cross. And so for 33 years, <clears throat> at least from the time he had understanding, uh, uh, he lived with that knowing he's going to die a horrible death. And, uh, uh, and he, it says that when he was crucified that even God turned his back on him because he took on all of our sins and God couldn't look on all that sin. And so he went, he said, well, nobody understand. Well, the truth is we don't understand what he went through. For his whole life, he had that understanding he was going to the cross for you and me. 
and he did it anyway knowing how terrible it was going to be because of his love and his compassion for us and the least we can do is understand it and benefit from that resurrection by knowing we have a high priest we don't have to do endure this life by ourselves the Lord is my shepherd I shall not lack he's alive and well he's my shepherd he's been feeding me watching over me a poor country boy all of these years and I don't expect him to quit anytime soon Luke 9 22 the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day and there you have it he said I'm coming up out of that grave in three days this was God's plan and it reveals God's power of raising the dead it's important for us because if the Lord doesn't come back and raptures out of here every one of us is going to die and it's very encouraging to know that we're going to be in his presence forever and that he will even raise these bodies up I tell people you better get used to your nose we like it or not because you're going to get to keep it for all eternity because even if you die God's going to raise you up just like he raised up Jesus if he by the way if he couldn't raise up Jesus he may not be able to raise us up so he raised up Jesus and he'll raise up us John eleven twenty five. Jesus said to her Martha remember when Lazarus died Jesus showed up late and she said if you just if you got here on time man uh, he wouldn't have died you could have healed him and he said I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will live even if he dies and we know he raised Lazarus from the dead, but he died again. <laughs> I mean, how many ever met him? You know why he hadn't met him? Because he died again. Uh, but God's going to raise his body from that grave one more time, and that time it's going it's to last forever. Now, because of his resurrection, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we who believe in him will live even if we die. Well, that is good news. Now, look at that one more time. I am the resurrection and the life. Now, notice there's a condition there. He who believes in me. People say, well, everybody's going to be okay. No, Jesus said you got to believe on him. And you've got to believe on him and confess him as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. It's required for salvation. I'll read that in a little bit. Uh, it's required for salvation that we believe in the resurrection. <clears throat> I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Because of his resurrection, we who believe in him will, will live even if we die. His resurrection guarantees our resurrection. In Luke chapter 24, verse 36, while they, the disciples, were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, <clears throat> Peace be with you. Uh, the disciples gather together, and they're all discouraged, and they're all down. And, oh, we thought he was going to be the great king, and now he's dead. And all of a sudden, he just pops right in front of them. <laughs> he just comes right through the wall. And they say, ah! I could just imagine that. And uh, <clears throat> it had to be scary and exciting all at the same time. It says, while they were still talking about this, I just want to show you that he was alive. And people said, well, well, maybe they just made that up. These people were crucified, some of them, and every one of them martyred in one way or the other. And you're going to tell me people are going to die for a hoax? No. And besides that, it says there were 500 people in the New Testament church that had actually seen the man after he came back from the dead. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. I think that say, he said that to you and me today. Peace be with you in the middle of suffering and dying all over the country that we can have peace because those who die in Christ, they're going to be okay. And the rest of us, he's going to help us get through it so we can continue to be a blessing to those who are sick and hurting. Verse 37, they were startled and frightened, uh, thinking they saw a ghost. They said, let's get out of here, guys. There's a ghost <laughs> running around here. Verse 36, he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? So he's asking them, why didn't you believe me? I told you this was going to happen. You should have believed me. You know, folks, 
if we would believe God, we'd have a, a lot less worry <laughs> and a lot less fear. They wouldn't have been so upset if they had believed him and believed he was coming back from the grave. Verse 39, look at my hands and my feet. He said, I'm going to prove to you I'm not a ghost. I'm Jesus Christ back in the flesh, and you, I, I want you to see my scars in my hand and in my feet and in my side, no doubt. Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. The, he was not a ghost. He was back in the flesh. Jesus still has a human body and the scars he bore for us. He still has them. He's at the right hand of the Father. And every time he looks at his scars, he remembers you and me because he died to set us free from the old slave master of the devil to birth us into his kingdom that we might become new creations in him, in Christ. Verse 40, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while, verse 41, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? He said, I'm going to prove to you that I'm back alive and well in the flesh because I'm going to eat something. And everybody knows that ghosts can't eat food. How many have seen the movie? <laughs> when a ghost eats food, it just falls right out on the ground. And, uh, and a lot of people ask me, will there be food in heaven? Uh, Jesus had a glorified body, and one day you're going to have a glorified body. And if he could eat, you'll be able to eat. And I know that'll make a lot of people feel better because they're afraid there's not going to be anything to eat in heaven. Uh, but there will be. <laughs> and whatever there is, it'll be better than anything you ever had here. Amen. I'm so glad he said this. Do you have anything here to eat? And he's proving to them, I'm not a ghost. Verse 42, they gave him a piece of broiled fish. The guy really liked fish. <laughs> 43, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And they started, well, maybe he really is alive. <laughs> maybe he really is back from the grave. Spirits and ghosts do not eat food. Jesus' human body was raised from the dead. He's still alive and well, and he's praying for you right now at the right hand of the Father. And if, he, if it should be his time for you to go to heaven, I don't know what everybody's circumstance is, but if it should be your time to go to heaven, he'll send his angels and get you and bring you into his presence. Good news. He's alive and well, and he's in charge. And he says, all authority and power, he said, has been given to me and uh, he said, I have authority over all powers, including demons and devils. And guess what? I'm on your side. And that's what he's saying to us today. I'm alive and well. I have all authority and power, and I'm on your side. You do live in a demonized world where evil, bad things happen. Well, uh, happens where you, ha you live in an environment where you had uh, evil, demonized viruses, <laughs> you know, and germs and bad bacteria and all these things. But he said, I'm walking with you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Man, long as he's with me, I can just walk through anything, and he's going to keep me and take care of me until my number comes up, and then he's taking me out of here to a better place, and that's, same, that's the same for all of those who believe in him and believe in his resurrection. He has a glorified body like we will have someday. There is a human in the Godhead He's on our side, and he's working with us. Therefore, if Christ be raised from the dead, then he is the victor, and death is defeated. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, I am, he, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And how the keys of hell and of death. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. You see, captivity has been taken captive. Therefore, we can be free. Today, you may be addicted to drugs and alcohol, illicit sex, all kind of bad things. Uh, but he says, I've taken captivity ca captive. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to open the blinded eyes, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So he took <coughs> captivity captive in his presence today to deliver every one of us from any addiction, stronghold, or bondage. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but mighty, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down arguments and reasonings and imaginations and every high lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? So you see, Jesus defeated death. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. You see, Satan has been destroyed. Jesus destroyed the devil's power over us by blotting out our sins. And I've heard even Bible scholars asking, well, how, oh, and to what degree is Satan destroyed? Let me explain that to you very quickly. That through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Let me uh, explain exactly what happened there. When he died, he took his sins in his righteous body and died in your place. That's why he had to be fully human and fully God, because God had to have a righteous man to die in my place and your place. And so the only way that could happen was be for the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Son of God that had been with God for as long as God had been God. And uh, he was also with God. He's the Creator of God. He's God. And he took on human flesh so that he could be a righteous human and die in your place. And so when he died, he took all of your sins and my sins in his body and uh, with his blood blotted out my sins and blotted out your sins. And when he did that, and when we put our faith in him for doing that, our sins are blotted out. And then the devil uh, has no legal right to touch us because the devil, devil's power over us has been destroyed because sins are gone. And Adam and Eve, they lived in an air-conditioned garden. Uh, free from thorns and thistles and bugs and everything that ate up their fruit, worms, <laughs> whatever. And but when they sinned, all these curses came in. And so sin was the problem. And so sin is our problem. When sin is blotted out, our sins are forgiven. Then the devil's power over us is broken. He has no legal right to touch me. And you say, well, I sinned yesterday. Well, you need to employ First John 1, 9. <laughs> if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When the sin is gone, you can tell the devil to get gone because he has no right to harass you and torment you if your sins are blotted out. But if you deliberately, intentionally sin, you open the door to the devil. You ever heard that? Well, that's true. And so you shut the door by asking the Lord to forgive you and to cleanse you by the blood of Christ. Satan has been destroyed to us. Because our sins are gone. You can look around the world. It hasn't been destroyed in the world to any degree. Matter of fact, it looks like he's getting meaner. <laughs> but uh, for us, he has no legal right to touch us. He can touch us. Uh, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm come that they might have life. And that more abundantly. And so he's present today to help us. He's at the right hand of the Father. If we're struggling with something, we can just come and say, hey, Jesus. <laughs> and, and he understands. He understands. He's been there. He's done that. Uh, and he knows. And I'm telling you the truth. I've been living for him just about my whole life. I haven't uh, been all that great at it, but at least I gave my life to him, and he's been good to me anyway. <laughs> and I tell you right now, you can always come to him. He is alive and well. And I know he's alive and well because he appeared to me too. And he's appeared to all the born-again believers. You know him. And you know he's real, and that's why when people laugh at you and say, oh, that's dumb and that's stupid, and who can believe in the resurrection? We say, we know him. My sheep know my voice, and I know people make fun of people. They hear God talking to them. I, I don't want to offend anybody, but if you do not hear God talking to you, you're not saved. You're not born again, and you don't want to die like that because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. You better be hearing a voice, and it better be his voice. Amen. Satan has been destroyed to us. We have authority over him as long as we don't give in to his temptation. And, uh, of course, doubt is a big temptation. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15, 3, look at this. For what I received, I passed, I passed on to you as of first importance 
that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Paul says, everything I've learned about Jesus Christ and the resurrection I've passed on to you, that he, here's what, it, here's what happened, he says, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. This is Paul telling you what he had learned uh, from talking to the other Christians. and those, Paul wasn't there. He wasn't a believer then. And so, but he's talking to all the people who knew Je He has talked to the people, maybe not all of them, but he's talked to people who knew Jesus Christ. He had gotten their report, their testimony, and they were telling him, look, I saw the guy. <laughs> you know, he was back. Now listen to what Paul says here. And that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living though some have fallen asleep. He said 500 people saw him at one time, and he says most of them are still alive, and I've been talking to them. And uh, 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep, some have died. Verse 7, then he appeared to James and to all the apostles, and here's the good part, and last of all he appeared to me, also, as to one abnormally born, we know the story how uh, God confronted uh, Paul on his way to the Damascus, on his way to Damascus to uh, persecute, torment, maybe even put to death Christians. And the Lord met him on the way, and he wound up in the dirt <laughs> looking up at the Lord. He says, Who are you? He says, I'm Jesus, and you've been persecuting me, and I'll knock it off. Now, he didn't say it like that, but that's the way a country boy says <laughs> it. And any, anyway, he had a personal, uh, he had a personal, uh, he had a personal visit from Jesus. I have, you have, everyone has, if you're born again. That's the good news. I mean, you know him. The devil may come and try to tell you. It's not real, but you know it is. And never let him make you question that. I know he's alive because I know him. I talked to him this morning. Matter of fact, I feel him right here by me right now. And I tell you right now, he's, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. Uh, he's there with you too. And if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, uh, uh, he knows that too. <laughs> now, he has appeared to all of us. You see, the New Testament church had over 500 witnesses. They knew Jesus was alive. That is why they turned the world upside down. Paul knew. We know. And how many of, of you today really know that he's alive? If not, you can know before this service is over. 1 Corinthians 15, 17. And if Christ has not been raised, this is Paul again, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. So people say, I don't believe in the resurrection. Paul says, your faith is worthless. Whoa. <clears throat> I didn't say that. Paul said it. <clears throat> but I believe every word in the Bible is true. 1 Corinthians 15, 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Verse 18. Then those... Also, who have fallen asleep or have died in Christ have perished. If he is not alive and well, and he's not the right hand of the Father, he did defeat Satan and death and the grave and hell, then they, all those who have died, are just perished. But, verse 20 says, But now Christ has been raised from the dead. Paul had met him. I've met him. Hopefully, you've met him. Verse 21 For since for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Uh, for since by man came death, Adam and Eve sinning, opened the door to the devil, brought death. There wouldn't have been any death on earth. People say, well, look at God sending all, this, all these curses and all this sickness and all these terrible diseases and all these people dying. Why is God doing it? I came to tell you today, God is not doing it. Death is... And all these curses, the Bible says right here, came through Adam's sin. 
And life and healing and deliverance and resurrection for us comes through another man who defeated death. You see, people talk, but they need to read the Bible so God can open their understanding. I have an understanding of the Word, uh, and hopefully it's all fairly accurate. <laughs> uh, but it's what understanding I do have is because I've spent time in it and give Him a chance to talk to me and teach me. But now Christ has been raised from the dead. Verse 21, For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. By man came death, by man came the resurrection from the dead, or of the dead. Verse 22, and then he goes on just to lay it out. Uh, For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. So, Go back to the Garden of Eden. That's where all the problems started. And the real solution for us started with Jesus Christ coming and living and dying for us. And then he finished it off by coming up out of that grave and going to the right hand of the Father so he could be there to watch over us, protect us, and intercede for us. When we come boldly in his presence, he will answer our prayers. But you have to ask. You have to come. You have to pray. You can't say, well, he knows. He said to ask. As a matter of fact, he said, ask, and the Greek says, ask and keep on asking. <laughs> okay, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. For everyone that asks and keep on asking receives. And a lot of times we're not receiving because we pray 10 seconds and give up. Well, I don't feel anything. Well, you keep praying until uh, you get into his presence. Sometimes we start praying, it's like the devil throws a wet, de- wet blanket of depression over you, and you don't feel like praying, but then that's when you just cast cast uh, that feeling off of you the devil get off of me and you put your faith in him and you do and you pray right through until you pray through to peace that's what I do that's the way it works for as in Adam all die so also in Christ all will be made alive all that put their faith and trust him not all but all that believe on him for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life some people say, well, he, he died and he shed forth his grace everywhere and everybody's saved. No, 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 no. It says, believeth. Believeth. Ephesians chapter 8, uh, chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. It says, for with grace, Calvary shed blood, are you saved through faith. Faith is our part. Calvary is his part. And we're born again, become new creations in Christ through faith. For by grace, are you saved, born again, changed, transformed, healed, delivered through faith. Faith is our part. Right now, uh, the whole world's in the middle of a pandemic that's scary, but we don't have to be scared. We can put our faith in Him. The worst thing that could happen is that we wind up in the presence of God. And I told people a long time ago, you're not going to scare me with heaven. If you're not sure your sins are forgiven, then get sure before you leave, leave the service today. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. You see that little in there? So also in Christ. You've got to be in Christ. I said in Christ. How you get there? You confess him as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. And you open up your heart and invite him in. That's how. You see, we must be in Christ. If Christ did not rise from the dead, our faith is worthless and we are still in our sins. But if Christ be raised from the dead, then we have eternal life, and our dead bodies, even after, of course, well, after we die, will also be raised from the dead, and we'll be forever in the presence of the living God, and we'll be able to eat fish or whatever He has for us to eat, because if Jesus and his glorified body could eat, so can we. Be encouraged. <laughs> encouraged. Jesus Christ is alive forever. Here's a big benefit to intercede for us. Nobody knows all the trouble I've seen. Uh, he's praying for you right now. I said he's praying for you right now. Or the word of God is not true. You just need to pray for yourself. <laughs> you know? And you need to pray for your loved ones, too. Romans eight thirty four, Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of, the, of God, right hand of God, who 
also intercedes for us. You say, well, how in the world could he be there and be in me? He that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. He's at the right hand of the Father, but by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, he makes him alive in you all at the same time, kind of like a great big television station. I mean, he's there, but he's here. and uh, Or the Internet, whatever, he's there, but he's here. Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. He's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us, and he's right there praying right now that Pastor Barry will preach a good sermon, and Lord, just anoint me. <laughs> Help me do it. Hebrews seven twenty four. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. He has a permanent priesthood. You don't have to worry about him uh, changing offices. He's going to be right there for you as long as you live. Verse 25, therefore, therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. I told you the title of this message is Resurrection Benefits. That's a pretty big benefit right there. <laughs> a permanent high priest, therefore, he is able to save completely. Save completely. You may be messed up emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, socially, financially. He can save you completely and get you out of all of your messes, but you've got to come boldly before the throne of grace and recognize he's alive and well, and he's there to answer your prayers. Ask and keep on asking, and he'll show up and he'll answer. It takes persistence. Because the devil wants to talk you out of it. The problem is the devil. He's trying to talk you out of it and tell you prayer doesn't work. You've got to pray past all that and believe the Word of God. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus Christ is alive forever to intercede for us and to save us completely from the evil one. He restores us emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, socially, financially. And if we have strongholds and addictions and bondages, he breaks those off as well as we serve him and obey him. Completely, completely, saved completely. Uh, salvation really be, means to be made whole, to save us completely, to make us completely whole. Our Lord is alive and at work. In Hebrews 4, 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast our confession, confessing him as the Lord of our lives. What's the confession? Uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord. That's my confession. That Jesus Christ is my Lord, and he is my healer, and he is my deliverer, and he is my shepherd. He's my everything. Uh, for we do not have a high priest, verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He's been there. He's been right in the middle of uh, your world and our world, and yet he didn't sin because he, uh, he was righteous and he, he maintained his integrity. And when the devil showed up to tempt him, he defeated him. And how did he defeat him personally on earth? It is written. It is written. And we need to take some of <clears throat> these scriptures when the devil shows up to tell us that he's not alive and well. We need to read in some scriptures that the devil's written that he's alive, that he's at the right hand of the Father. It's written, I have a high priest. And besides that devil, I know him. Now, bug off. You need to tell the devil where to go. Some of you always want to tell uh, someone where to go. You can tell him where to go. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly. Here it is. Y'all ready for this? Uh, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Grace is God's provision for us. Grace is what Christ did on Calvary. Truly have borne our sickness and carried our pains. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastised by peace was upon him, and with his stripes were healed or made whole. It's Isaiah 53. And uh, so uh, he has provided everything we need. Grace is everything he's provided and every promise that he's given. Every provision. And it says, let us come before his throne of provision, his throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace or find 
provision or find help in our time of need because Jesus Christ is the helper. Amen. He says, he even says, I'm your servant. And he still is. He'll still help you. He'll still bless you. He'll still uh, give you wisdom and direction and power and ability to do things you didn't even know you could do. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Anybody got any needs <laughs> right now? <laughs> and uh, if you're stuck in the house with a bunch of kids, you've got some needs. <laughs> <laughs> and you need this message and you need a high praise and you need his peace and his joy and his presence and you might need to call on him to come and chase uh, strife out of your house and he can do that too you see the resurrection was necessary that we might have a loving high priest Jesus Christ knew it was very important for him to bear away our sins but it's equally important for him to come out of, out of that grave and to watch over uh, us and to make sure we got all the benefits he provided. See, he, he's not here to teach you. He's uh, in your life to make sure you do not miss anything he provided. You say, well, how do I know what he's provided? You get into the Word of God. You get into his presence. You quit being too busy. I said you quit being too busy. And you get into his presence, get into his Word, and he'll begin to teach you who you are and what you got in Christ. That's why a lot of Christians are living way beneath their privilege. They don't have enough time. Uh, make time. You got a high priest. Make some time for him. I believe he told me to tell you that too. <laughs> See, we can receive anything he provided on Calvary because he is our high priest. He knows what <clears throat> is provided and he has the authority to give us what is provided <clears throat> Revelation 3.20 <clears throat> our living Lord says behold I stand at the door and knock not only is he at the right hand of the Father he's knocking at your heart's door right now because he wants to help you well where's God he's knocking where are you <laughs> get off that television quit watching television so much and and the internet, oh, how much time do we waste on that? And these smartphones. Every time I pick up my phone to see if I got a call, there's all these other things popping up. And 30 minutes later, I realized I hadn't even looked to see what my messages are. <laughs> I've been reading all these other things. Listen, we need to shut this junk off for a little while, spend some time in the presence of Almighty God, and talk to our high priest. His name is Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you'll quit, if you'll get off that cell phone, <laughs> Turn that TV off. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what does it mean open the door? It means you cut the cell phone off. <laughs> or put it, put, it, put it where you can't hear it and see it. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, makes time for me, I'll come in to him and will die, divine and dine with him and he with me. I'll come in and fellowship and you'll have joy and peace and patience and all this Godly things coming in your life because he has been invited into your life. Even though he's alive and well, you can shut him out of your life. All of us have. We need to make sure we got him invited back in. And uh, he is alive and knocking at our heart's door. This is only possible because of the resurrection. If he stayed in the grave, he wouldn't be available. Romans 10, 9. Look at this. If we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe, uh, if, we, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What's the condition? I told you what they were. I, uh, but most people don't believe everything I say, but they believe the Bible. Let's read it again. Uh, Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. That's something you got to do. Lord Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. It's personal between you and him. I make you the Lord of my life. What does that mean? It means you're going to do what he tells you to do. It means with his help, you're going to obey his word with his help. And if you mess up, you ask him to forgive you. You mess up, you confess up and make it right and try again. And you never give up. 
You never give up. Confess Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's why it's important for you to hear this message and for your friends and loved ones to hear this message. And you can still share it even after it's completed because it's, you know, on Internet and Facebook and everywhere else. And uh, thank the Lord for that. But if you're going to have faith in resurrection, you need these scriptures. And it says it's a requirement for salvation. And it's not my requirement, but it's his requirement. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, believing in the resurrection is required. We must confess Jesus as our Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. So i like for everyone just to say quietly right now to yourself, I confess that Jesus is my Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. I confess that Jesus is my Lord, and I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the grave. Therefore, I am saved. Because of resurrection, we have a human in the Godhead who understands us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ proves he is the Son of God. If Christ be raised from the dead, then he is the victor, and death is defeated. Jesus Christ is alive forever to intercede for us and to save us completely from the evil.